Before we get started with the show, I'd like to thank our sponsors. Our first sponsor is Atmos Planning, financial planners turning visionaries into meaningful millionaires. Our second sponsor of the day is Planet Duct. Reach out to them for any of your air duct cleaning needs. Now, let's get on with the show. All right, welcome back to the COS Business Podcast, the number one podcast in Colorado Springs. My name is Andrew Hasley, and I am the host of the show. Today, we have on Cassie Smith with True Nature Roofing. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about what your business is? Yeah, thank you for having me on yeah. there. Um, we are a roofing company here in Colorado Springs, women owned and operated, and we serve everywhere from El Paso County, Teller County, and, and down to Pueblo. And we handle everything from small repair work all the way up to full replacements, commercial or residential. All right, sweet. Well, we'll get more into that in this episode, but first we're going to roll the intro music and then we'll get started. This is a show where we have real conversations with entrepreneurs and business owners who are mostly in Colorado Springs doing things in the community of Colorado Springs. Yeah, yeah. I like it. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Thank you. So, so yes, can you tell us a, a little bit about why you got started in, in roofing? Oh, man. Do we have all day? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, well, the, the I'll start off with saying, like, five years ago, if you would have told me I would have be doing this, I would think you're totally nuts. Um, okay. I don't come from background. Um, my family, nobody in my family has been in construction, um, you know. So, I was, like, a fish out of water getting into this industry and I feel like it picked me more than I picked it okay. and um, I fell in love with it um, so my story and my background is um, you know I've always been an entrepreneur at heart mm -hmm. um, my dad owned a very large uh, waste uh, removal company here in Colorado Springs okay so I grew up watching him you know and wanting to recreate that in some way shape or form I really looked up to my dad growing up so um you know <laughs> that's kind of like where I got my entrepreneurial background mm -hmm. um but uh uh, I did not have the background in it. I was actually a hairdresser for nine years before I got into the industry um, and kind of have like awakening moment there. And um, yeah, so a couple years ago, I, I was going through a lot of changes. I was going through a divorce. I was a single mom. I was I I was really breaking down my old um, identity. Okay. And I had, I, had, I thought I was nuts. Everybody thought I was nuts around me. I, I didn't know what the heck was going on, but I just knew that I was meant for something so much bigger. I'd been running my own, um, salon for, you know, pretty much my whole career. Mm -hmm. And I just woke up and I just felt like I was not in my skin anymore. I felt like I was in somebody else's world or somebody else's body. Um, weird. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was really, it was, it was just a very big awakening moment in like 2017. Okay. And, uh, so <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I just started kind of self discovering like what I wanted to do. I, I didn't know exactly what I was going to do. Um, I just knew that the universe was going to put me in where I needed to be. Mm -hmm. Um, so I ended up taking a job with an electrician here in town. Um, wasn't a great experience. That was my first time really ever working for somebody before. Okay. I've always been my own boss. I've always been, you know, um, running my own show. Um, but I, I liked learning something new. I was doing his business um, development, his office work, clerical, you know, all that stuff. Okay. Um, but learning about elect, the, being an electrician, and I was kind of like, oh, man, it, this would be something kind of cool to pick up and learn a trade. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a really big advocate on trade work. I think mm -hmm. that's kind of where the future is. Um, you know, we, we need people that are in the trades to keep our society running. Um, but it wasn't it wasn't a good fit with me at, the, at this company. It was just I, I was – I felt really uncomfortable working there, honestly, mm -hmm. but I ended up meeting my mentor that got me into the, this industry. Mm -hmm. Um, and it took me bothering him for probably about two, three months to like take me seriously and teach me what he knew. He worked for a, um, home builder and a roofing company and, um, he did sales and, um, and their business marketing. And, um, I would, I just was like, teach me, teach me, teach mm -hmm. me, teach me. And he just was like, go away. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, after, um, a couple weeks of bothering him. He actually was like, all right, let's go. And he took me to uh, Manitou Springs and put me up on the scariest roof I've ever been on to this Yeah, day. Manitou, I could imagine. Yeah, yeah. it was like a freaking 12-12 pitch. And it was just, it was like, you know, mm. it was it was scary. But he was trying to, he was trying to get me to go away. That's but, hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I, I stuck around. And I, and I and he was just like, "All right, shoot, let's go, let's let's do this." So he started training me and um, teaching me about the business. Um, he had a background in insurance, so I was I was learning about insurance as well. And and right before I got into that, I actually got um, was kind of looking at that realm, going the insurance side because okay. I, I I think that's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and so this kind of married everything together. 
Um, and then we went to work. I mean, we, I, we had a big storm that happened in 2018 and that's where I got a lot of my, um, mm -hmm. experience for in the beginning. And I didn't know anything. I knew that shingles went on a roof. Um, but what I did know, um, and that what I was confident in was how to take care of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, everything that we do, I'm coming from a service-based business yeah. in a hair salon at that where you, yeah. that's where people talk. Oh yeah. <laughs> everybody. I mean, people will tell you their whole life stories yeah. and you become invested with these people, mm -hmm. um, you know, personally. Personally, because they, you know, you, they feel like family, they feel like For friends, sure. and, and they are. Um, so I, I just excelled. I was really good at what I did. I might have not known at that time, like mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the the baseline uh, of construction or roofing or what, you know, but I knew how to take care of people. So I did, I did really well and I was rocking it. I was having so much fun learning something new and I was just on the job and, you know, bringing the ladders with me. Like mm -hmm. I, I really just, I really fell into it and like fell in love with it. And then what ended up happening was the, the company that we worked for, you know, it was, uh, th th they looked great on paper, had a good reviews, you know, mm -hmm. they just looked like the, the perfect family. You know, I went to their beautiful house up monument and, mm -hmm. you know, it was just like, this is a really cool company to work for. These are like really cool people to work for. Like I felt really confident in that. And then we got a call um, you know, a few months after that storm in 2018 mm -hmm. and, um, the guy that we went to work for was a literal crackhead and oh. like undercover, crack. undercover crackhead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. And he, um, he like skipped town with, I, it was like, I, I believe about half a million dollars worth of contracts mm. and just and worth the contracts. What is what does that mean? So in business, so, you know, um, um, and it, when you have insurance work like that, so mm -hmm. you're working with somebody with that has a homeowner's claim, mm -hmm. um, you know, they, uh, they give them two forms of payment. One's an ACV payment, which mm -hmm. after cash value. And then when you're done with the project, it's, you get a second payment because they don't yeah. want to give it to you all up front. For sure. They want to make sure you get the work done. Yeah. That's how I do business. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and most com you know, most companies in town here, you know, they require 50% down to mm -hmm. cover materials. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, we, we follow up the check at the end when we finish the job and, mm -hmm. and deal with the insurance. And, um, so, you know, we're, we're collecting checks and, and getting these projects rolling. And we got about, you know, we were getting some of the projects rolling, but he just ended up, I don't know, couldn't handle the pressure and grabbed all the money and skipped town. And it wow. was totally devastating. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I don't, I don't know why I didn't freak out. I just had this like. I had this like calmness come over me. Cause it'll slow you down, you know, like yeah. you gotta figure the problem out. <laughs> I, well, I'd been through something, you know, I'd been through so much up mm -hmm. to that point with like my divorce and becoming a single mom and just like all these other things. And it was just like another thing was like, okay, okay. <laughs> of course this would happen, you know? And, um, but kind of like Danielle was saying, what the future? Yes. Yeah. What the future? <laughs> um, so, um, you know, I just, I, I just kind of was like, you know, what? I'm, I'm going to figure this out and handle this. But my main concern was, these, my people, you know, my customers, I want to take care of them, mm -hmm. you know, and I put my trust into this company and they put their trust into this company. And this guy ended up just, you know, screwing yeah. a lot and, of people and over. And you got those contracts. They trusted you. Yes. And then they got screwed yeah, over. Yeah. And I'm, and, and, you know, me and my mentor were the ones, um, you know, we're the ones that were handling everything from the get-go. Mm -hmm. We're the face of the company and yeah. he's just kind of in the background. So they didn't know who, the, you know, it's just, it was just, mm. it was a mess. It was, it was totally a mess. And, um, my mentor freaked out, um, you know, rightfully so. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I just had this like weird, like, I just was super calm and I was just like, we're going to start a roofing company. And he just looks at me like, you are brand new at this. You have no idea really what you're doing. You're just at the baseline. And I said, I don't care. Yeah. I was like, we're going to start a roofing company because I know I can do better than mm -hmm. that. And I know I can take care of people better than that. And being from this from this area, growing up here, like mm -hmm. this is my community. I take that personally. Yeah. And um, so so he he kind of had a little freak out mode for about two weeks. And um, I I. I just, I'm a really big, um, into like law of attraction, manifestation, that type mm -hmm. of thing. And I just kind of like really went in and was like, how am I going to do this? Mm -hmm. Like, how am I going to get this figured out? And, um, and I, lo and behold, the, like I said, it's like divine, it was like divine planning and divine timing. And I really don't think I really had to say it just really happened for me. Um, it was, uh, you know, at, right after that happened, I was at a Chick-fil-A with my kids sitting mm -hmm. there. 
watching them. Which play. you love Chick Fil A. Oh, I love Chick Fil A. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, <laughs> so um, I was at Chick Fil A with my kids watching them play, and I'm just kind of like contemplating, like, what am I gonna do? Like, what am Cassie? What are we gonna do? And um, I just felt like like every time I'd like try to build my life, it would just crumble down. Build my life, it would crumble down. This is one of those moments. And um, somebody came up to me. This this guy um, came up to me um, while I was watching my kids at Chick Fil A. And he, I think he made a comment about my tattoos, like where I got my mm-hmm. tattoo work. And and um, I saw on his shirt, True Nature Roofing. And I was like, oh, you work for a roofing company. He mm-hmm. goes, I own it. And okay. Go, oh, that's super cool. I said, I was like, I was like, are you eating lunch alone? Can I, can you come and sit with me? And I, I want to pick your brain. Cause mm-hmm. I just, and I told him my story. I told him, like, this just happened. I said, I don't, I, I were already worked for two contractors already. I've always mm-hmm. been my own business owner or my own, op- I've been an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. with, you know, and I've, I've worked for two two contractors already. And, and I'm not impressed. Yeah. I can do better than that. And, um, and how did you do it? And, you know, he kind of told me his story. They were from Texas and, um, he was like, he was, and so he's just getting into like how he got into the business. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, I said, I really want to start my own or maybe even find a company that wants to, you know, leave the game and I'll yeah. take it over from there. And he's like, this is really weird. But I was just having a conversation with my partner and they're like, we want to go back to Texas. We want to mm-hmm. go back home. And we were actually talking about either selling our company or folding up. And I was mm. like, whoa, okay. Um, give me your card. <laughs> so, yes. <laughs> so he gave me his card and, um, and I kind of did my research and was checking out the company and, you know, it was formed in 2015 mm-hmm. and it, was, it had really great reviews and it, it like they were in good standing. And I was like, huh. All right, cool. And then later, I think it was either that same day or the next day, I ended up going to a barbecue at one of my really good friends. Mm-hmm. Um, his name is Jeff Clark. Okay. And he's a real estate agent here in town. He's pretty well known. And um, sat down and he was like, man, how's, how, how's the roofing going? He's like, you look like you're killing it. It looks like you're having so much fun. I was like, yeah, I am. And then I was like, but this happened, you know? Yeah. And I told him the story. He's like, man, that sucks. And I go, I'm, I, I said, you know what? It's going to be totally fine. I'm going to start my own company. I'm going to figure it out and start my own company. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was like, man, I've always wanted to invest in a roofing company. Really? And, okay. and, I, and I was like, really? And he's like, yeah, always. Isn't it cool when you have a big vision? Yeah. How when you start talking about it, things start falling into place? Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. So I was like, well, if I get you a business plan together. And I said, I met this guy that's like wanting to unload his company. Yes. And it's already established. We, we, would, we, would, we wouldn't be starting from scratch. Like, would that be something you'd be interested in? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. So then um, I went back to my mentor and I was like, hey, uh, you know, was he still um, in freak out mode? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I just said, okay, um, I found a company, I found an investor, and I need you because you're the one that has experience. He had six years of experience at that point. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I need your experience for us to get this work. I, I, and I'll figure out how to run this thing and, and I'll, we'll do sales and we'll just figure it out. Very, very naive, by the way. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> it was like, I didn't realize how big of a, what, how much I was biting off, but yeah, it yeah. was, um, it was, it was such an adventure. So by the time we got that bad news with the, with the guy that we worked with, mm-hmm. um, to like, I think it was like six or seven weeks later, I had a keys to a roofing company. That's amazing. Yeah. What's the benefit of, uh, taking on a company that already exists. So there, it, there's pros and cons to both, right? Mm-hmm. So if you're starting one from scratch, you're starting one from scratch. And yes. like, I mean, your business, like d- d- coming up with everything, the website, mm-hmm. every, and that costs a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of effort. Mm-hmm. And being from here from Colorado Springs, um, this, the, if you're not, if you're not already established here, mm-hmm. like it, for you to build trust here, because this is a small, big town, you know, mm-hmm. um, th- that was the benefit for me. This is the way I kind of looked at it. It's already established. It already has a good credibility. Mm-hmm. It's been in the community since 2015. I think I'd rather take that and grow it into something that it hadn't been yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and because uh, we already have the reputation and the standing there, if yes. that makes sense, you know. But there's also cons to that as well. You know, it's like you don't, I obviously didn't get to pick the name or, you know, any mm-hmm. of that stuff. And, um, you know, and then, and the guys that we took it over from, there was some other stuff they didn't, they didn't tell us about. There Mm -hmm. was some, there was like a, they had like one lawsuit that was there that they didn't disclose with us. Oh wow. And And you guys take that that on? Yeah, we took that on and we handled it. So, you know, so there's pros and cons because people are people and sometimes they're not the most, um, you know, transparent about things. For sure. (laughs) Um, But you know, it was just a learning, I, I think it was the best decision for me and for our company at that time. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, so we just rolled with it mm-hmm. and I, it was really in our benefit and also kind of being as, as new as I was. Cause I, at this point I was probably in the industry probably about 
five, six months. Mm-hmm. So I'm green, 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 green. Yes, <laughs> <So> yes. <laughs> I, I'm learning, you know, I'm still, still, you know, three years later, I'm, I'm still learning mm-hmm. a whole ton of stuff. Um, I, that'll probably never end. For sure. Um, but like, I, I had no idea what we were getting ourselves into, but I was totally up for the challenge. Yeah. And, um, so, and trust me, if we're through, <laughs> through the last couple of years, you know, just learning, just like, on the on the business side, running a business versus like being a salesperson, two totally different things. Yes, you know. It is, yeah. So I really enveloped in that and and grew myself. I had to get really uncomfortable. My job makes me uncomfortable every single day, but that mm-hmm. is super important because it makes me grow as a person. Yeah. And I respect that, and I love that about my job. Mm-hmm. And um. So yeah, so that's how we we just kind of got rolling from there. And, uh, you know, a couple years later, that mentor that started the business with me is no longer in the business with me. It is just, it is me. So I am, um, you know, I'm in the hot seat. I'm the captain of the ship and I have so many big dreams and goals for where we want to be. And it's, you know, and I understand now running a business at that caliber of why businesses fold within the five first five first five mm-hmm. years, because it is hard work. Mm-hmm. It is not for somebody that has thin skin and yeah. it, you're just constantly having to get on, you know, be on your toes and figure things out and, and provide great service on top of that yes. too. And, and, and I am kind of in this mode where I feel like after, get, you know, losing my um, mentor, my partner, um, I'm at this like growth mode that I'm like, okay, I had some, like, but we, we separated for some of some other reasons, but mm-hmm. it just, I saw this going somewhere else and he was just staying here, you know, and okay. it was, um, it, I, it, there was just a lot of that kind of stuff going on. Mm-hmm. So it was like I had to make that kind of Did divorce. he have stake in the company? Yes, he had okay. stake in the company. He, and I don't want to get too much into it, but, sure. um, you know, he he just, he was making decisions that weren't the in his personal life mm-hmm. that were starting to bleed over to the business. Yes. And you have, you can't, you can't do that. You Especially know? when other people are relying on you. Absolutely. Yeah. You can't do that. And, um, you know, and we care about like the big thing, why I wanted to do this is I want to take care of my community. And I just didn't think that he was a hundred percent into that, mm. you know, like this is a really great opportunity in this industry. You, it's, you can be very successful and there's a lot of abundance from that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and material wealth and that type of stuff. I, that's, that's great. Like everybody, like I, of course I want to make good money and everything, but yes. that's not why I do what I do. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just wasn't like that for him. For sure. So, um, he kind of, it was kind of like a little bit of a black cloud that needed to lift up and, mm-hmm. and, um, there was a couple signs that were, uh, pointing towards that direction and it just ended up happening that way. So, Mm -hmm. so now I'm in this, like this re like, I feel like I'm starting from ground zero again. I'm kind of at that moment, but I'm realizing like, man. And when was this? How fresh is that? that, that, So that happened in January. Oh, okay. So it's pretty, it's still pretty fresh, you know? So, um, but, uh, so now, but now (laughs) from the last couple of months, I've been going back and forth of like, like, can I do this? Can I do this by myself? Can I, you know, and I was get doing, I was doing the steps to prep for this because I just knew mm-hmm. in my soul that. And yeah, what, what are those steps for anyone who's a business owner that's watching that, that yeah. has gotten into a partnership that maybe they want to get out? What are the steps they need to take? Well, if my advice is if you're starting to see red flags now, please speak up. You yeah, know, I, I, I love this person dearly. Um, it's just, you know, I, you always have a special place <laughs> in my heart, but, um, you know, I let that overcome like the right thing, you know, like, and I noticed that, um, it wasn't going to work out Yes, and I should have maybe said some things earlier, but because Mm -hmm. I didn't want to hurt that person. It's also hard, you know, (laughs) it's, it's really hard. And, and I was also grappling with like my own worthiness and like Mm. what my own, like, can I do this? Mm -hmm. And I was just, I kind of used him as a crutch for a really long time. Like, Mm -hmm. Oh, well I'm not quite there experience wise. I really need Mm -hmm. him. And, but you're essentially the, holding yourself back. <laughs> yeah. But day by day I was doing things that nobody else was doing. I mm-hmm. was taking the steps to grow myself and grow the business. And it was just, I was doing a lot of the stuff on my own anyways. Mm-hmm. And I just, I didn't realize it at the time. 
So I guess if you're in that situation that you have a partner that it's like not working out with, you, you really do need to nip that in the butt and just be completely honest from the get go. Mm-hmm. And, and it might hurt feelings. And there's a lot of, you know, especially, you know, being in this industry, there's a lot of ego and that mm-hmm. type of thing. And I just, I, I, there's no room for that for me, you know, and at the end of the day, I created this because I wanted to mm-hmm. give back and I wanted to do good. And, um, and it was quickly becoming a reminder that this person was not in alignment with that. Mm -hmm. And, um, so he had to go. And as much as that pained me and, you know, it's still, it makes me very sad, Mm -hmm. but it was what was best for true nature roofing and Mm -hmm. it was what's best for me. So, um, yeah. So, So what does that look like? Is that just, uh, goodbye and it's over or do you have to like paperwork or no it was paperwork you know we did it all the legal way it, it got it got nasty i'm not gonna be you know i'll, I'll be it got nasty okay um, but you know there was just um yeah so it just it but it needed to happen mm-hmm. it was I, I really feel like it was kind of god aligning that and it just For sure it was like this big bang moment of like oh sh- you know that's the final straw can't be associated or in business with this person because mm-hmm. of mistakes and and behaviors of his own so um if you're going through that i feel for you it's the it's horrible it's definitely horrible um i think 2020 was definitely a breakdown year for me with Mm -hmm. like people that i held really close Mm -hmm. um because if you're my family whether we're blood or whatever you're my family i i Mm -hmm. I love you i i care for you i i want to you know um yeah like you know that's that that means everything to me and um you know, I had to kind of let go of a lot of different people, not only just professional wise, but in my personal life as well, because it just, they weren't in alignment with where I'm going mm. now. If that makes sense. 100%. Yeah. yeah. I've had a few similar stories as well. <laughs> yeah. And I just really had a big breakdown over 2020 and just all this crazy stuff that happened over 2020, you know, with, with COVID and just, it just 2020 was a big breakdown year for me again, mm-hmm. you know, and another great breakdown year, but uh, I'm realizing breakdown. Like what like, do you mean by breakdown? Uh, it's just, it's kind of like shedding your skin to be ready okay. for like the person you're going to be. If that okay. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. You know, like not like an, like an emotional breakdown, but like oh, oh a, definitely a, bu- a bunch of emotional <laughs> okay. breakdowns. A long way. Oh yeah, no. I, I, yeah, if you don't have an emotional breakdown going through that kind of stuff, do you have a pulse? Like, you yeah, know, it, it, it's it's you know, I just I I wish like going through that, I would have had the courage to like stand up mm-hmm. and be like, hey, this is not cool. Like, I and nip it in the butt then, but I didn't. But I but I learned through that experience mm-hmm. too. So I, I you know everything is like woulda coulda shoulda. I did what I had to do in that moment. And what I thought was right. And then mm-hmm. in the hindsight 2020, you know, you know, mm-hmm. things change. And, um, and, but I made the steps in the right direction to get there. Um, and like I said, I knew it was coming. Like I just instinctually knew it mm-hmm. was coming. So I did everything that I could do that I got licensed. I got my ducks in a row so that, you know, if, cause he was hold, he was the license holder. He was, you know, um, mm-hmm. that with a lot of responsibility on him. So I took it on myself to, um, go get my license to mm-hmm. get, do the steps I needed to do that I could be confident enough that I have all the, um, capabilities and stuff that I need to run this business correctly mm-hmm. and, and do what we got to do the right way. Yeah. And so I started that, you know, about a year before this huge breakdown mm-hmm. and I'm super glad I did. Like, so if you're in a position, For like sure. that, yeah, yeah. somebody, if you're in this position, <laughs> like start prepping now. And, you know, and it takes a lot of courage to stand up to people that you love and Mm -hmm. that you care for. But if it means like damaging your own integrity or Mm -hmm. your own values to protect this person, it's not worth it. You know, it's people, I, I, and I kind of fell into this too, of like feeling like you have to take care of people all the time. Mm -hmm. People are responsible for themselves. For sure. And, and you just need to do what's best. You got to take care of you. And I mean that in the most unselfish way first, Mm -hmm. because if, it's like when you're on an airplane, right? Put your mask on. We literally just talked about this oh, last really? episode. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. it's, it's the same same yeah, thing, yeah. you know, and it's just, and it's not from a selfish as- aspect. It's, it's, it's from a growth aspect and it's like, yeah, you, if you don't have self-love and self-respect and, and know who you are, mm-hmm. how the heck is anybody else supposed to, you know? Yeah. And, and that's it's a huge. Part. And I think. There's probably a reason why the last three episodes we've talked about that, because uh, it's it's huge, you know. Like we're learning to t- self care is big, and yeah. you, it's how you take care of other people is taking care of yourself first, essentially. Yeah, so. yeah. and I think it's like really weird. Like our society is kind of like set it up to like, no, you are the last one to get taken care of. You are mm-hmm. the last one on the totem pole. 
That's that's completely. It's, yeah, it's it's not true, you know, and, yeah. that, and that goes for like family structures. And, you know, I'm a mom. I've got two kids, like mm-hmm. five and eight or um, I'm sorry, five, it's about to be six and eight. OK. Um, <laughs> and, um, you know, so y- if you're not taking care of yourself and you're not taking care of, you know, your well-being and that's like heart mind body you know everything alignment with your with god with mm-hmm. the spiritual or whatever i you know um it's it's super important and everything it just makes you into a, like a manifest beacon for what you really want because mm-hmm. you're honoring yourself you know so I, this this last couple of years has been that journey of you know figuring it out yeah. loving myself and <clears throat> forgiving myself for those mistakes i've made mm-hmm and moving on from it, taking it as a lesson and being like, okay, what did I learn from here? And how can I take it to the next level? And, 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 and then also how can I teach people, you know, that I've gone through this, Mm -hmm. um, you know, that are going through something similar, you know, how can I be vulnerable and share my story and, and teach people like, Hey, it's okay. Mistakes are happen. It's life. You're a human being. I've been through this. And if I could tell you anything that you can nip that in the butt or, or help yourself in the long run, you know, i I think that's like the reason why we go through most of the things we go through and we're we're supposed to share it. We're supposed Mm -hmm. to, you know, get vulnerable with that because what's the point of holding that in, you know, when you can help somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of like what this show's about too. And thank you for sharing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I kind of went down a rabbit yeah. hole, but um, yeah, thank you for listening. It's yeah, uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's important. You know, it's funny. You're the second Chick Fil A story on this show. Oh, ch- yeah. <laughs> Chick- there's a, there's a, there's another person said they were sitting at Chick Fil A, and there was a person that came up to them, and like it was just it's funny that that's happened twice on the oh, show yeah, now. Oh yeah, Jesus' chicken. So, yes. you know, wonderful places ha- or wonderful things happen at those places. For sure. <laughs> yeah, I just thought that was an interesting. Uh, a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, so shout out to Chick- Chick-fil-A. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ch- we need them to sponsor us. <laughs> and yeah, by the way, we are, I am drinking uh, Exchange, The Exchange Coffee. And it's just The Exchange now, isn't it? It used to be The Exchange Coffee, right? Coffee House or something. I don't know. They keep changing it. But <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to shout them out a little bit. Oh, good. And I'm, I'm jealous. I don't have one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Should have got you one. <laughs> oh, I'll go get one down the street. Mm-hmm. Where are you going to go? Uh, I'm going to go to the Exchange Coffee. Okay. <laughs> good, good. See? So, so yeah. So, so where do you want to take this company? What's, what's your visions with this? So, I, so I'm in growth mode. I want to really um, expand uh, over the next couple of years. Where I see this going in five years is I want to build this to a point where I... Um, <clears throat> Oh, there's like, it's like, I get kind of emotional thinking about it, but, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, so I'm, I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm in the uh, growth mode of finding my team, finding my people, finding mm. the people that see the value and the opportunity mm-hmm. and want to build that with me. And I really want to get it to the point where I'm working um, I'm not working in my business. I'm working on my business. Same, same. And uh, that's like, that's a big goal of mine. And, um, and I don't know, and I don't know, like I teeter totter, like, do I want to be like, a you know, over $10 million business that, uh, you know, like cause some of these roofing companies are massive, like 10, 20, $30 million. I don't think I want to be that big. Mm-hmm. I think I really want to be a staple in the community. Everybody knows true nature roofing knows that they take care of our clients mm-hmm. and we're, we're like a mom and pop shop that mm-hmm. are local from this area, you know, they're not um, out of town, um, fly by night companies. Like I, I really want to establish that. I really want to establish that type of culture that we're here for our community. We take care of, you know, Colorado Springs and the mm-hmm. surrounding areas. Um, and I want to be able to, you know, bring on a team that I'm able to, you know, provide an income and, and a, a, a future and mm-hmm. st- stability there and get it to a point where I can just have the right people in the right place where I can kind of step back and be like, you know, and step in and, and help with leadership with my leaders within my organization. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, we have a lot of work to get there, but I, I totally believe what we can do that. And, um, and then I also, you know, um, I have a sister company that I actually run with my husband called uh, mm-hmm. Remington Builders Group. So mm-hmm. we are full service GC that we just started here in December. General contractor? Gen- general okay. contractor. So we hold an A license, which is like a big boy license. Um, okay. You know, that's like uh, very similar to like what a GE Johnson or, you know, it's it's a big, it's a, it's not every contractor that walks off the street has the, the project list to carry that type of license. Okay. So, you know, we're wanting to kind of uh, these two, these two sister companies grow them both um, literally or like 
grow them both together Mm -hmm. and where they're able to bounce a lot of things off of each other and offer, you know, not only am I able to offer with True Nature Roofing, you know, um, all your exterior work, your roof, gutters, paint, you know, um, siding, Mm -hmm. that type of thing. But with Remington Builders Group helping, you know, with anything you need interior wise, Mm -hmm. not even just, you know, residential wise, but commercial, like we're doing a lot of um, we're walking a lot of projects to do like tenant finishes, builds outs on, um, I, we just went and walked one on, um, the old independent records. Okay. So like it just, uh, getting that type of, um, growing those two businesses together. Um, that's definitely in the cards and what we want to do, uh, and be able to provide opportunities for other people and, and, and like, I love what I do cause I get to take something that's old and ratty and, and needs TLC and mm-hmm. give that to them. And then there's this beautiful product that that's like pleasing to look at. And, you know, it's just, it's the restoration part of it. I just, I really love what we do cause it's, yeah. it's super fun. It's super rewarding. And, um, it's just, you know, so that's, that's kind of our plan. Like, I really want to build this into, um, something that I can step back from and then work on passion projects. Like one of them, I want to work with like women, single Mm -hmm. mothers, um, get them into the construction field. Um, and it doesn't, you know, when people think like, oh, well, I'm a mom, there's no way I'm going to be working for a construction company. What can I do? It's Mm -hmm. like, we need more women in the industry. Mm -hmm. Um, we're really good communicators. We are organized. Like that's exactly what the construction industry needs you know sure. whether it's like that. a general contractor or, or roofing company or whatever and for whatever reason there's not a lot of women that mm-hmm. are doing what I do and um, I want to change that I think that's you know mm-hmm. I, there's so much opportunity here and I think it's kind of overlooked especially by women because I don't think they realize that they could do it so if like if sharing my story can you know just inspire one woman to be like hey I want to go check that out and see if there's an opportunity for, for there for me um, you know that that's a success for me and, and another one too is like I really want to work on getting more children and kids into the trades. So like, Hmm. you know, letting them know that that's an option for them. Yes. You know, I I know like in our generation, you know, like college is really like really beat into us and Mm -hmm. and college is great. You know, it's, it's a great opportunity, but it's not for everybody. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I just want to open these kids eyes to like, Hey, you, if you go and learn Mm -hmm. a trade, like not only will you be able to provide for yourself and your, your upcoming family or whatever, there's just so many opportunities where you can have mega success and, yeah. and provide good work and and be proud of what you're doing without having to go to college. And then, you know, like in later in life, you know, if you want to, you can, mm-hmm. you know, I just think it's kind of tragic at 18 years old. We yeah. tell these kids like, hey, you're going to pick what you're going to do for the next for the rest of your life. Go get a degree in that. Go get in debt mm-hmm. and then go work that job. And, you know, you might have a moment where at me when I was 26 years old, 27 years mm-hmm. old, where I was like, I don't want to do hair anymore. I mm-hmm. thought this is something I wanted to do forever. I, that's, I thought this is something I was going to be, you know, I, I thought I was going to own salons and uh, like, you know, really build it that way. But I literally had an awakening period and was like, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. So I just think it's, you know, I, I really want to do something that gets into the community, teaches these young people that there's opportunities here and we, and we need to get more people in the trades. I mean, there's less and less, it's harder to find mm-hmm. good workers and, and good laborers and, you sure. know, and we need all that stuff for us to sustain as a community and as mm-hmm. a society we need people doing these type of blue collar work and i think people kind of have always it's kind of got a stigma where you know we, we look down on it because yeah, it's blue collar sure, because yeah. you don't have a degree but that's it's that's silly too you know yeah because grow, growing up like you said in high school uh i literally heard no one say i'm going to be a plumber or a roofer or any kind of things like that there's never discussed it like it just wasn't and yeah. or you know it's interesting i always like since i was like 16 17 i was like i knew i wasn't going to go to college yeah, <laughs> me too. i was like i don't want to i don't like school and uh i i had an entrepreneurial uh ideas visions you know yeah. first i was focused on music yeah. and i was caught in that and it wasn't really going anywhere but i loved it and uh but then I was just, yeah. So, so yeah, I do see that, you know, like, well, and it takes a lot of courage to mm-hmm. follow that too. Mm-hmm. Cause I remember having this distinct co- conversation with my parents, um, especially my mom. And I was like, I'm not going to college. And, okay. <laughs> and she, she was like, 
you're not going to amount to anything. You're not going to mm, be successful. Low life. Or- <laughs> yeah. Like she's like, she's like, what do you want to do? And I was like, I'm going to go, I'm enrolling in, um, I'm enrolling in the ABP program for, you know, to go to hair school. Mm-hmm. I was in high school and I, I just, I was like, that's the route I want to go. I said, I can, I can graduate, have my license and start working right out the get go from, from school. And I love my mom. She's just, it, when you become a parent, you like realize like, like, oh, my, my parents were so messed up and really mean. But it, but she was just trying to point me in the right, best direction, being mm-hmm. a parent. And I understand where she comes from, being a parent now. Mm-hmm. But, you know, at that point, she was just like, she's like, you're going to be working at, like, cost cutters and not amount to anything. <laughs> and But I, I thank God for that because it fueled me to be like, sure. like, screw you, I'm going to do it. Yeah. You know? That's, <laughs> so, yeah, it's good. It's kind of like a catch-20, or not catch-22, but it's interesting how that is, you know? Yeah, is yeah. going on? That, that fuel, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, um, uh, yeah, and I, uh, that fuel, and I think that's probably why I'm here, where, why I'm doing what I'm doing now, yeah. because, <laughs> because, you know, there's a, being a girl and being in an industry that's mostly ran by men, mm-hmm. you know, and they look at you like, oh, you're so cute, you know? Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> you think you can do it, and I'm just like, watch me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I, it might take me, I might struggle a little bit, I might, it take, might take me a minute to figure it out, but mm-hmm. watch me. When I get the experience and, and everything underneath my belt, I'll run circles around you for sure watch me do it and that's just the way i am that's how i've yeah, been since i was a kid you're driven yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you can't really teach that either you yeah. know some people some people have it some people don't yes you know? exactly life teaches you that yeah yeah <laughs> or so, your mother telling you no <laughs> yeah yeah and it's like and i'm like i'm looking for those type of people to be like yeah mm-hmm. i see what you're doing i see what you want to grow i want to grow with you and i want to take this opportunity so that's like and i have i have some people that are coming in um you, you know that i that i've been building relationships with and i think it's just really important to just be honest and open and just no butterflies no sunshine no you know know bull crap Mm -hmm. um you know just real real life real you know i just i i think everything is uh so painted nowadays like people are just wanting to keep everybody happy and some and that's just not realistic you know Mm -hmm. And and there's a way to just be like this is the way it's it is how do we fix it and you know um and figure it out from there without having to be rude or condescending or ego driven or you know but and not being weak either Mm -hmm. you know so it's it's just if anything i've learned in my 30 years of life, it's just like, you know, the more you become okay with yourself and, and accept yourself, love yourself, you know, it, it's crazy how everything in life just realigns itself to mm-hmm. your, like who you're going to be in the future. And, and we do, you know, I think a lot of where entrepreneurs get it kind of sideways. It's like, I'm going to create all this stuff and I'm going to do it myself. That's mm. silly. Yeah. That's so silly because you need other people. You mm-hmm. need your community. You need other people to grow all together. And it's yeah. not just about you. Yeah. You know, it's, it's about the unit as a whole and, and what we can create together because it's going to be mm-hmm. way more powerful and way more of an impact than something you can create on your own. For you sure. Know? Yeah. And that's, that's where I'm at with my business, Behemoth Visuals. Um, I've been, doing it lone wolf style uh, for the first couple years. And like this whole year I went into 2021 deciding that I'm not going to do that no more. I'm going to try to build a team, a good one, and uh, just focus on that. And it's interesting though about you said like it, you have to rely on others. You can't just do it yourself because that's behemoth visuals. But technically if you look at the, this podcast, it is the essence of what you just said. Like it is like this wall, this equipment, like all from other people, uh, like Besides, well, not all the equipment, the music or the the audio equipment, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like things just coming at this place, you know, like this spot downtown, uh, the vision that I had, I was telling people about it. Like that is the the, the podcast is about the community and you know bringing people together. Yeah, because it takes every little little, even if it's the smallest little piece, you know, mm-hmm. it's 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 a group effort. It's yeah. like it's, and I if you go into that and go into that with that mindset. It's like, Oh man, now you're cooking with peanut oil. Now you can mm-hmm. like really grow because it's now not just benefiting you, your ego, like who you are. It's mm-hmm. like benefiting everybody. Yeah. And that's what we're supposed to do. Like that's where we're here to figure out on this earth. I believe like, you know, we're here to come together and unify and figure out how to make the world a better place. Mm-hmm. And it's not just a one man show with a lot of people. You For know, sure. Are, like, this was literally a one man show. Like yeah. show. <laughs> yeah. And I, but we got I Marcus right over here now. He's helping out. He's coming in and, and like, see, that's part of the community piece as well. Marcus runs, uh, 
uh, uh, companies as well, and something called the Tiny House Festival. Uh, and like, he, oh, he, I've heard of. Okay, yeah, oh, Marcus, yeah. that's you. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he's an entrepreneur himself, and like, he really wanted to come in, you know, like, and help the show as well. So it's just, it's beautiful, you know, like. Yeah, thank you, Marcus. <laughs> yes, You're dude. awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. Is there anything? I guess we'll start wrapping this up. Is there anything yeah. you'd like to promote today? You know what? <sighs> just be good human beings. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I want to promote today. Like, you know, it's like, um, you know, I, I, if this is like, if this goes to anybody and anybody is listening to my story and what, you know, um, if you end up sending the business to my company, Trinity Roofing, thank you. That's, that, I can't tell you how much that means to us. Um, but at the end of the day, just like, I want to be here. I want to show up to be a good human being and to produce um, something that takes care of people in my community. And I just ask that people do the same, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and to look at things from a different point of view and, uh, you know, um, realize that we're all in this together. There's no such thing as competition. There's no such thing as these like boundaries that we put up or mm -hmm. these divisions. Like it's silly. That's not what this is about. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I so my, my one thing, if I want to promote anything, is just be a good human being mm -hmm. and, and think about how you can take care of another person today isn't you know? it isn't it beautiful how far we've come as a society as humanity uh just like because if you think about that like the the competition mindset was how business was done just 30 40 50 years yeah. i mean that's how what's his name uh Andrew Carnegie. Carnegie. Yeah, how he, maybe not him, but, you know, his biggest competitor. I yeah. mean, all of them. That was the whole thing. Like, you know, yeah. destroying your competition, wiping them out. Yeah. And, like, it's just interesting how far we've come. And maybe it's the internet that helped make that happen, like, bring us closer together. I mean, also just we evolve as humans. So, yeah, yeah, we evolved. <laughs> and I think just, like, we're figuring out, too, that everybody's connected in one mm -hmm. way, shape, or form, whether it's, like, I'm here or somebody on the other face of the world. Mm -hmm. um, we're all connected. And if we, you know, if you if you do bad onto others, it really is you doing bad onto yourself. Yeah. And it doesn't really... Um, um, it's just not in alignment with if you're wanting to do if you're wanting to get to a certain amount of success and you're being nasty or mean or egotistical or mm -hmm. whatever to others, it's that's not going to get you very far. No, it's just, it, you know, so once you figure out like, hey, you know, instead of getting mad at somebody on the highway and flipping them the bird, you know, it's just like, hey, maybe that person is like on their way to their their you know their wife's having a baby or well you know it's just yeah it's just being taking taking yourself out of it and being like all right empathy empathy mm -hmm. you know care about people it's not that hard yeah. you know and i know it's sometimes like it can be it, it, it can feel like it <laughs> there's some people that you just want to like paint your head up against the wall with but you just have to care about everybody because at the end of the day it's really caring about you too because mm -hmm. you know? it's just we all live in the same place like yeah it goes back to think about yourself to help others but yeah. also help others to help you so it's Absolutely. like full circle <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a definitely full circle and, for sure. And, uh, yeah, I think it, I'm excited. I'm excited for where we're going, and I'm mm -hmm. excited to see. You know, like I'm just excited for you and your business and what Thank you've you. got it on. And there's anything I can do to help you, please let me know because I will I will do anything in my power to help as well. well I appreciate that. Well, sweet, cool. <laughs> yeah. So so this has been a great episode. Thank you for coming on. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I <laughs> yeah. really appreciate it. <laughs> so this has been the, the COS Business Podcast, and uh, here with. Cassie Smith. <laughs> and we'll see you guys on the next episode.